You've got to develop a sense of urgency. Aurelia said, stop living your life like you have a thousand years to live. In life, you're either here today and you're gone today. If there's something that you want to do and you can't do it all at one time, do just a little bit of it. I like what Robert Shuler says. He said, by the yard it's hard, but inch by inch anything is a cinch. <laughs> do just a little bit of it. Hey there. If you're looking for the motivation to start getting more done with your life, listening to motivational speakers is a great way to get started. Subscribe to us for endless motivation. I believe that if we begin to align our thoughts with action and be relentless, don't try two or three things or 15 or 20 things, but a hundred things, 500 things if necessary, 10,000 things as Edison did if necessary mm -hmm. until we find a way out. Many of us, we eliminate many possibilities for ourselves because we really don't do all we can do. Hmm. I think A.O. Williams was right when he said, all we can do is all we can do, and all we can do is enough. And I think, honestly speaking, even judging from myself, and I think that my commitment is stronger than most people. But if I had to literally measure my, my commitment in terms of what I put forth in my dream, mm -hmm. I would say, that I might have given about 18 to 20 percent of what I'm really capable of mm -hmm. as high in consciousness as I believe that I am mm -hmm. comparatively speaking where I used to be I'm still nowhere near reaching 50 percent of the commitment that I can make to accelerate the growth and the development of my dream and the manifestation of the things that I know within myself that I'm capable of producing so our biggest challenge is beginning to look at within ourselves to remove those energy blocks because if we are not producing the income that we want, let us not look outside of ourselves but look within ourselves to find out how am I blocking me? Mm -hmm. Am I really giving it all that I have? I have. Uh, am I really being as creative as I can be? Am I really unstoppable? Am I as relentless as I can be? Am I exhausting every means possible? Am I turning up every rock to find what it is that I'm looking for? That what resides between our ears, when we're thinking about how do I come up with $500, $1,200, or $2,000, mm -hmm. is the same gray matter that resides between the ears of a Ross Perot mm -hmm. or a Donald Trump when his bankers say, you've got 30, how is it that one man or woman can do it and do a million times more than these other people and the other ones don't? Mm -hmm. It has to be consciousness. Mm -hmm. It has to be, and when we talk about consciousness, we're talking about a collection of our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions and experiences used as an active force to produce in our lives that which we want to produce. Mm -hmm. Because everything that exists in life, the microphones that we're speaking in, the shoes that we have on our feet, the chairs that we're sitting in, the clothes that we're wearing, the homes that we live in, the cars that we drive, all of that came out of our consciousness. That all came out of the invisible into the visible. And man was the vehicle, the, the outlet to produce that. I didn't realize, you know, when you live your life, you don't know what it's doing to people because right. it's my life. I didn't know my life was as bad as it was because it's my life. It's what I went through. I think it's like the norm. It's the norm. Yeah. That's what I did, man. But when I started getting these emails from people saying, hey, you know what? You changed my life. That part changed my life. That part of your story changed my life. And because I have so many different parts of my life that so many people resonate with different spots. Maybe it's the obese part. Maybe it's the bullying part. Maybe it's the learning disability part. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the abusive parent part. Whatever it may be. Right. So many people draw from my story and I started getting these emails. And I was like, God, man, you know, and I'm a big believer in something more powerful than me. I don't know what it is, but I'm not the end all. So I was like, uh, I got to start doing more. Mm. If I'm touching <clears throat> these people's lives. Right, a few people here and there. Right. Yeah. Maybe I need to go out here and do some more. It's a crazy story, man. I mean, if you guys... Um 
haven't gotten the book, you guys can pre-order the book. This is actually a galley copy here, printed out. Uh, make sure you guys check this out. Can't hurt me. Master your mind and defy the odds. And I was when I was reading the the uh, the first part of the book about your childhood. I mean, your father just seemed like was just so abusive yeah. physically. I mean, it's one thing to be emotionally abusive and another thing to be physically. And when you have both, mm -hmm. it's like the perfect storm of like the makings for chaos in your life. Right. And it just sounded like he was just nasty. Mm -hmm nasty and everything was your fault and you were always wrong and you weren't living up to a standard both you and your brother and your mom right and it was just constant physical abuse over and over i mean the story of you just being bent over and him just like whipping you over and over and you just gasping for air i was just right. like oh my gosh this is crazy right um how did you deal with that how did you like overcome the constant physical and emotional abuse you know what it's all i knew mm -hmm. so when you're born to that it's all you know. You, I mean, you know something's not right because in my mind, at a young kid, I could tell, man, you know, the way I was processing things wasn't right. Right. I mean, I suffer from severe toxic stress, and that was one of the big reasons why I started. You know, I had a learning disability. My focus in life was way off. I was afraid. I was afraid of everything. And when you have that kind of foundation um, growing up. And that's where you start life at, yeah. is being beat, being abused, and also working all nights at a skating rink, not going to school. And you have a guy who's an alcoholic, and the second he got drunk, he got mad. And so our house lived in fear. Yeah. And the one thing that you can't ever get out of a kid's mind is your mom's mom, like like your mom's face. The terror. The terror of your, of your mom's that's face. The so. You know, you know, I didn't care about my brother, I didn't care about me, but I saw this woman go from Mary Poppins, the sweetest person on the planet Earth. And when you see your mom start to transform to a shell, to a person whose face becomes stoic, a person who has no emotion, and that changes a kid. Yeah. And when you're young, and you have to grow up so fast, so by eight years old, my mind was of a of a 40 year old at eight. You know, my family, like life came at me and it makes your brain, you know, you're not outside playing with kids. You know, you're trying to avoid getting beat. Yeah. You know, you're avoiding all these things. Yeah, yeah. But when you go home, it's supposed to be safe. Right. And you're right. getting beat again. Exactly. And what's funny about that, we lived in on, on Paradise Road. Yeah. We lived that. on Paradise Road. And it wasn't was, so paradise. You know, it was anything but paradise, man. You know, once those doors shut, yeah. You know, my dad gave everybody a different view of him. He wore the nice tailored suits. Right. He smiled. That's right. Your dad's amazing. Those doors shut, man, and the devil himself came out. So it was, it was, it was rough, and that's why my foundation was so uh, was so beaten down at you know, at a young age.
up is down, what's left is right Chasing stars and holding view I can't see the end, but we'll see it through Sky on your mind. 